Despite the boom, electric car sales are still only a fraction of the overall industry. So why are consumers holding off on buying these cars? I put that question to Levi Tilleman. He's the author of a book called The Great Race, The Global Quest for the Car of the Future. He's also managing partner at Balance Strategic, a market research firm. Well, in the U.S. market, we actually had a pretty good month in August. They sold almost 15,000 electric vehicles, which means that year on year, um, you have pretty substantial growth. I think it was 60-some percent growth compared to last year. Uh, so they're not a big segment of the market, but they are growing very quickly. Um, and, you know, we had, a, we had a slow year in 2014, 2015 picked up, and 2016 has been quite robust. Let me ask you about the, the cost of batteries, because that seems to be the big concern people have. A, a, any indication that that cost is going to come down, is that still the major uh, hurdle for a lot of people, you think? We've seen about a 20% year-on-year decline in the cost of electric vehicle batteries, extending back to 2008 now. So costs are actually coming down quite quickly. Um, at this rate, we're expecting to see parity sometime around 2019 or 2020. Let's talk a little bit about China. You know a lot about it. Uh, it. It really has a big footprint when it comes to electric cars. But other governments now setting uh, their own targets on getting electric cars uh, out there in the world and on the road. How important is it for government initiatives when it comes to this? Well, this is still a market that is completely tied to policy um, in countries all over the world. So you see GHG emissions policies in Europe. Uh, you see GHG standards in the United States. There are the CAFE standards in the United States. And then a big driver has been the zero emission vehicle policy in the state of California, which for complex historical reasons is affecting about a third of the U.S. auto market and has really been the driving force behind electric vehicle adoption in the United States. You've uh, watched this for some time. I guess uh, the way to best illustrate the ups and downs of the industry is just uh, follow the Chris Payne documentaries. Uh, in 2006, <laughs> it was Who Killed the Electric Car? In 2011, it was uh, Revenge of the Electric Car. Yes. When are we going to see a film where it's the outright dominance of the electric car? We're still a ways away, aren't we? I think so. Um, what we expect is that the rise of what we call transportation network companies, so th these are companies like Uber and Lyft, are going to play a big role in the mass dissemination of electric vehicles. And the reason for that is that these companies have a much more rational approach to costs than the average consumer does. Electric cars are much cheaper to fuel than a gasoline-powered vehicle. And once you get out to 2019 or 2020, where an electric car costs about the same amount as a standard internal combustion engine-powered vehicle, then they're going to be strongly drawn towards that cheaper fueling option. But I remember chatting with you about this earlier. I think people look at it short term, and maybe you can talk about this instead of long term. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about you don't have to take it to the auto mechanic to do this repair or that repair over the length of, a, of, of a, the ownership of a car. Um, the expense is really, but it's that sticker shock, I think, that people yeah. really struggle with, right? Yeah, there are, there are many fewer moving pieces in electric cars. There are fewer things to break. And the result is that maintenance is extraordinarily cheap compared to your standard internal combustion engine vehicle. But today, the upfront price is still higher than a standard vehicle. Now, that's changing. By the end of this year, GM is launching the Chevy Bolt, which will be about $30,000 after federal incentives, and it goes about 238 miles. And so that's a car that costs less than the average price of a vehicle sold in the United States of America, and you can drive more than 200 miles in it. Um, so I think that, that will start to solve that sticker shock problem. You've written a book about the, the car of the future, so in about 30 seconds, can you describe it for us? Well, I think the transportation system of the future is going to be autonomous. It's going to be shared, which means we're going to rely a lot more on companies like Uber and Lyft for transportation. And finally, it's going to be electric. And that's the system that we're headed towards in the next 10 or 15 years. So you think within 15 years that the future is here? Without a doubt. All right. Levi, thanks so much. Thank you.